and welcome back to my channel where I continue to cover the Dungeon Master's Sidekick tools provided by Tasha's Cauldron of Everything source module for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. In this particular video, I will be leveling up the Warrior class sidekick that we had created in the previous video in preparation for our leveling process. As we progress leveling in this particular character, I will explain each new feature and adjustment that should be made to ensure the character's features are usable between each level. However, keep in mind that the sidekick NPC characters should only be leveled when the average level of the party is greater than the sidekick's existing level. Additionally, as we have discovered in previous videos, it is best if the DM applies the new level to the character, but it can be left to the player to set up the final pieces of the actions tab in the event a new feature can be actioned in such a way. So with that, Let's take a look at what we're going to make use of at level 2. When we apply this level, the character is going to gain the ability to use Second Win, and anyone who has a fighter-based class will understand what this particular skill does, but we'll go over it anyway. We will not be seeing an increase in the proficiency bonus, however, so we will focus solely on this. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this level into place. And then I'm going to go down to the Abilities tab and pull open Second Win here and then scroll down to the Actions tab, because I know already that we will be adding this to our group here. The sidekick can use a bonus action on its turn to regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus its level in this particular class. Once it uses this feature, it must finish a short or a long rest before it is able to use it again. The sidekick can use this feature twice between rests starting at level 20. It's funny that they say starting at level 20, as if they expect you to go higher. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and set this into place. We'll move this over to the warrior grouping. IOR. And there we go. The only thing missing is the level adjustment. And that is actually set up right here. So what we want to do, we've already got the 1d10. That's already taken care of. We also want to make sure that we set up the level in addition to this particular stat. Now all we do is we scroll down, or click down I should say, until we get LVL. Now that we've done that, we should see that this particular bonus, if you will, will continue to go up as we progress leveling this character. And I will try to remember to showcase this a couple of times just so that we can actually see that bonus increasing as our character level increases. The last thing that we have to deal with is setting up the short or a long rest utilization. So we want to switch this to preparation, scroll down until we see our new feature, put a one use here, so that's a one there, and we want to change this to a rest. Now when this particular character completes both a short or a long rest, they will regain the use of this particular feature. And that's all we have to do. And that completes everything that we need to do for level 2. At level 3, our character is now going to gain a new feature, but still will not see an increase in their proficiency bonus. So let's go ahead and drop this into place. And then we'll go down to Abilities and open up Improved Critical here. With the Improved Critical skill, there's nothing that we have to do in relation to adding this particular skill to our actions tab, but we do need to make an adjustment to how critical roles are actually rolled in relation to this particular character. And we do that by modifying the weapons meta field, if you will, and that is up here. And what we want to do is set it up so that when this particular character rolls a 19 or a 20, whenever they make their attack roll, it will go through and automatically classify that as a critical hit. And all we do is we modify this in reference to the crit on section of this particular screen. And it is both melee and ranged, although this character is most likely going to be a melee based character. But there's no restriction on what kind of attack can be made. It's a sidekick's attack roll. That means they could be using a bow, or they could be using a melee weapon. However, the warrior is generally 
a melee character, whereas the expert class is generally the ranged character. And that's all we have to do to set up improved critical. At level four, we're going to see our first ability score improvement points, as well as no increase in our proficiency bonus. So let's go ahead and drop this into place. And then I will explain what the ability score improvement feature, if you will, means for this particular character. Just like a normal player character, this feature gives you the ability to take a single ability score and modify that ability score by two points. A second option is instead of taking one ability score and modifying it by two points, you take a selection of ability scores, specifically two of them, so we could theoretically modify our dexterity and our constitution, and increase each of those by one point. There is potentially a third option, and it's a bit of a gray area when it comes to sidekick characters because there's no rule that states they can't have this particular ability, but at the same time, there's no rule that states they does. Or, or can't, I, or uh, don't, I should say. <laughs> not does, but don't. So it is not entirely clear as to which of the rules one should follow. So I always err on making it fun for the player, which means that I would allow an expert-based, a spellcaster-based, or a warrior-based sidekick to select the third option as well, which would be a feat. Now, generally, that would imply that the dungeon master is making that choice. But if there is a player who is potentially controlling that particular character, then you could potentially put that choice onto them. It's entirely up to you. However, it's also going to be up to the Dungeon Master as to whether they're allowing feats in that particular campaign to begin with. And generally, it's a 50-50 split because most DMs will, while they see feats being overpowered, will still allow them to be used. So as a result, there's a good chance you might run into a campaign where feats aren't even permitted to be used for st standard player characters. Therefore, they should not be used in that particular campaign for the sidekicks. That's going to be entirely up to the Dungeon Master. In this particular case, I am simply going to increase our first stat by two points, so in this case strength, to give this character a better attack capability and damage capability when they're making their melee attacks, because that's their primary function. And that's all I'm going to do when it comes to the ability score improvement. The next time we get one, I'll take two ability scores, and adjust each of them by one point, and then I will select a feat for the third ability score improvement, if there is one, which I think there is, yep, at 12, and then show how that works, so that every sort of step in the process can be explained. But that completes everything that we have to deal with for level four. At level five, we are simply gaining our proficiency bonus increase. So I'm gonna drop this into place, and what this means is that I have no idea why that is a negative. There we go. Um, what this means is that any skill or saving throw or weapon attack that we are proficient in, our proficiency bonus applies to that. So we're going to see an increase in our dexterity saving throw here. We will see an increase in our two skills that we have that we are uh, proficient in. And we will see an increase in the damage or the attack roll when it comes to the weapons that we are proficient in, and those are represented by the star symbol next to this particular button here. And that's all we have to do for level five. There's nothing else that we have to do. At level six, this character is going to gain the ability to attack with an extra attack. As we have already acquired our first proficiency bonus increase, we're not yet going to get another one. So let's drop this into place and then open up extra attack. With the extra attack capability, the sidekick character is now able to make two separate weapon attacks within the same action round. And I'm using my words very specifically there. Essentially, when your round is going through its stages, you're going to have a movement round 
or a movement portion to that round, an, an action portion of that round, a bonus action portion of that round, a reaction, and potentially a free action, as in free speech, something like that. In this particular case, with the extra attack capability, it's your action round that is allowing you to make use of your extra attacks. So, even if you're dual wielding, you're still only going to be able to make a single set of extra attacks during your action round. Not during a bonus attack, and not during your reaction. And that's just generally how the extra attack feature works. And that's because of the way that things have been worded. So just be cognizant of that. You may have heard me explain it in a plethora of other videos, so I won't repeat the entire details here, but that's how the sidekick is going to make use of this extra attack. Even if they are dual wielding, they will be able to make two primary weapon attacks and then one bonus attack with their offhand. During a reaction, they can only make one primary weapon attack simply because of the way that the attack of opportunity is worded. And that's essentially what you need to keep in mind. So with that, we have now completed everything specific to level six because we do not need to add extra attack to our actions page. We just simply have to remember that during an attack action, we can make that attack twice. At level seven, we are gaining a new feature called battle readiness. So let's drop this into place and pop open that feature. So with the battle readiness feature, our character is gaining an advantage on their initiative role. For those of you who are not sure what that is, an initiative role sets the order in which characters and creatures attack in the combat frame, framework, if you will. So in this case, the combat tracker. When you roll an initiative roll, you will see that your character will shift position depending entirely on what the value of that roll was, and it will always be the leftmost box within the combat tracker. So I'm going to throw this there so that we can see that a little bit clearer. And as you can see, some of these characters simply don't have it, and this particular character, for some reason, rolled a negative one. I'm not sure why. Apparently all of these did. But... Generally, what it comes down to is that with this particular skill, you now have essentially a permanent effect that you can add to your character or to this particular character that gives you an advantage roll every single time you roll initiative. So if you recalled, when I clicked on this initiative die, it only rolled the one die. Let's go and set this up. So we're going to set up battle readiness as a new actionable feature. And that dropped into here. So this is going to be warrior. And we're going to create a new effect. And it's called battle readiness. Semicolon ADV INIT is going to be the condition. It is on you, and it does not expire and doesn't go away after X number of rounds or time or minutes or whatever. It's always going to be there. Now, whenever this particular character is added to this particular action sheet or combat tracker, you can apply this effect. And whenever you roll an advantage roll, which we do on the main page, you will see that it will now roll two die. And it will... <laughs> What would be the odds I would roll the same number? <laughs> anyway, it will roll two die. And one of those will be selected over the other. So we rolled a 19 and a 10 in this particular case. We took the 19 and we dropped the 10. And then our bonus was applied to the number we got, giving us a very high initiative roll. As long as that effect is there, this skill will always apply or this feature will always apply. You don't have to worry about it. The only time you have to worry about it is if your character is removed from the combat tracker, all of the effects that were associated with that character also go away. So you're going to want to go back and add them into it whenever they're dropped back into place. So just keep that in mind. But that's everything that we have to do for level 7.
At level 8, we are gaining our next ability score improvement and still no increase in our proficiency bonus. So let's drop this into place. And as I discussed previously, I'm going to take two scores here and modify each of them by one point. And I want you to focus on what happens here when we increase this constitution point. So this is going to go to a 15. And this is going to go to a 14. And you saw that we went from a plus one to a plus two um, constitution modifier. Well, now this particular character is missing eight hit points. You might ask, how do I know that? Because we had a plus one change or difference between the modifier bonus that was here to the modifier bonus that we now have, we can multiply that by the character's current level, which is plus one times eight equals eight, and add that to the total max hit points that this particular character now has. So this will bring this up to a 41. And that's how you deal with a constitution point increase when it comes to the psychic. At level 9, we are simply seeing a proficiency bonus point increase here. So I'm just going to drop level 9 into place. And that is literally all that we have to deal with because we're not gaining a new feature. And we don't have to do anything for the adjustments made by the proficiency bonus. At level 10, we are seeing an increase in a feature called improved defense. In this case, it's probably a brand new feature. So let's drop this into place and take a look at that ability. So improved defense, here we go. In this particular case, all we have to do is adjust our total armor class by one point. And there's no restriction here of whether you have to be wearing armor or not. So, we have a shield, we have armor, where do I put this point? Well, I put this point over here in the miss category, because it's being it's a miscellaneous feature, if you will, that is increasing this particular character's defenses, or armor class. And that's it. That is everything that we have to do at level 10. At level 11, we are getting a brand new feature called Indomitable. Now, a fighter will understand what this is, but it's a brand new feature to this particular character. So I'm going to drop this into place and pop open our Abilities tab here and set this aside so that we can see what we need to do. With the Indomitable roll, if you will, we are now gaining the ability to re-roll saving throws that we fail. So it's not anything that you rolled a 1 on, it's that you actually failed. But you can only do this once before you have to execute a long rest at this particular character's level. When we get to level 18, we get to use it twice. So right then and there, we know that we need to add this to our Actions tab to track the number of uses. So I'm going to throw that into place. And set this up so that we have a one daily use. And now you can see, if I go through and click this, it disappears from our list. But if I go through and execute a long rest, a short rest doesn't work, but a long rest does, and it comes back, we now have the ability to use this again. Just for an FYI, only the Dungeon Master can do this on a per character basis. So, <clears throat> what about on the reroll of the saving throw? There is no effect capability that we can add that would function, if you will. We could do something very similar to what we did with Lucky and just create a dummy effect that has this N tag, if you will, to remind ourselves while it's in the Actions tab, and it can always be there, or not the Actions tab, but sorry, the Combat Tracker, and it can always be there, to remind us that we need to reroll those saving throws. I will leave that as an exercise to you to go through and actually create that effect. It should be fairly straightforward. And if you look back at the point of the video where I created the lucky feature, you should see that process from one end to the other. So you don't need to worry too much about it. But whenever you make use of this particular feature, you need to make sure that you click this pip here, if you will, so that it goes away and comes back on your rest. When you hit level 18, you need to simply modify 
this 1 to a 2, which we will do when we get there. So you will see that as we progress. But that's everything that we have to do for level 11. At level 12, we are gaining our next ability score improvement. So I'm going to drop this into place, and then I'm going to break for a second while I look for a particular feat that I think will be useful for this particular character. In this particular case, I have decided to go with Weapons Master, and the reason why is we're going to be gaining a dexterity score increase as a side effect of this particular feature. Now, I could potentially give our dexterity a plus two bonus if I didn't select this feature, but I want to showcase what you would potentially do if you're looking at maybe gaining access to some form of additional proficiencies with weapons. In this particular case, we're already proficient with martial and simple weapons, so we're not really going to gain anything here. But we could theoretically specialize in other martial or simple weapons as a result of this, although we're not going to gain double proficiency. So we're not going to be able to add twice our attack modifier to it. I'm simply doing this to showcase what happens when you select a feat that modifies your actual stat. And if you look here, we currently have a 15. So I'm going to drop this feat into place. And just scroll up a little bit here. Drop that into place, and I'm going to select Dexterity. And this is the primarily the reason why I wanted to show this to you, because it is going to prompt you for which ability you wish to modify when you see this kind of a selection. And once you've completed that, it will show you that it has gone through an increase on that particular point. At level 13, we are only gaining our proficiency score improvement, so I'm going to take care of that. So we are now at a plus 5 bonus, which matches what we see there. Our dexterity ability score and saving throw has gone up. Sorry, not our ability score, our saving throw. In addition, our skills have gone up, and our attack capabilities have gone up. And that's everything we have to do for level 13. At level 14, we are once again gaining an ability score improvement. So I'm going to drop this into place. And this time, I'm going to increase my constitution by two points. So that becomes 16. And once again, I now have to add hit points to this particular character. So a total of 14 hit points. So that's 85. And if you wish to see how I figured that out, you should check out the ability score improvement for level 8, where I went through and explained that. But that's everything we have to do for level 14. At level 15, we are now gaining use of the extra attack feature again. And this means that we can now attack a total of three times with our primary weapon. So I'm going to bring up the extra attack ability again so that you can see its text. In theory, when you are dual wielding, this now means that you could go through and attack three times with the longsword, and then once as a bonus action with your dagger. When it comes to an attack of opportunity, you can only attack once with either your longsword or your dagger. It's entirely up to you which one you're going to be doing. But you can only attack once. And that's how extra attack will work when you gain two uses. So it is now a total of three primary weapons attacks, and it doesn't matter whether you use one-handed or two-handed. And if you were holding this longsword one-handed and happened to be handling a dagger in the other, then you can attack once with the dagger as a bonus action. However, don't think you can actually do that with a longsword because this is not a light weapon, and you can really only do wield when you're holding two light weapons. So having this in your offhand might actually not help you in this particular case. But that's essentially how the extra attack works for a character at level 15. At level 16, we are once again gaining an ability score improvement. So I'm going to drop this into place, and I'm going to bring the dexterity up two more points to 18. And that's just simply going to increase our initiative as well as our saving throw. 
But that's everything we have to do for level 16. At level 17, we are literally just gaining our last proficiency bonus point. And I've already dropped the level into place because I unfortunately took three tries to get this particular take. <laughs> and it's a very big pain in the butt to back all that out. So uh, just recall that at level 17, we're only seeing our proficiency bonus score increase. We're not seeing anything else except for the side effects of that increase. But we don't have to do anything else. At level 18, we are seeing our last improvement to the Indomitable feature. So let's drop this into place. And all you have to do is go to your Actions tab, scroll down until you get to Indomitable, make sure you're in preparation, and modify this to two uses daily. You do not get to do this through any form of short rest. It's only a long rest, even at level 18. And that's everything that we have to do to set up the character for level 18. At level 19, we are gaining our last ability score improvement. So I'm going to drop this into place. And I'm going to bring... Hmm, tough call. Additional hit points or potentially an improvement in our initiative. I'm going to go with the initiative. So I'll bring that up to 20. And that'll modify our total initiative roll as well as our dexterity bonuses. And that's everything we have to do for level 19. At level 20, we are gaining our second use of second win. And let's drop that into place and scroll down until we see second wind and increase this to two uses. And you will see here that we now have a plus 20 bonus to the healing hit points that we're going to regain. And that's based on our total character level. So you can see the bonus adjustment has been automatically working for us. But that's everything that we have to do when it comes to our level 20 character. And that in fact finishes off leveling this character all the way through to level 20. I hope you found the process that I explained through this particular video somewhat useful and simplified the ability of going through and actually leveling a particular warrior through from level 1 through to level 20. With that, I would like to thank you for watching this particular video. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not done so already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.